knives come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. However, it's without question that there's only one design which has become the most popular and widely used honey beehive, at least here in the United States, and it's called the Langstroth Hive. In 1852, the Reverend Lorenzo Langstroth invented his design, and that design has remained almost unchanged ever since. When we come back, we're going to take a closer look at the Langstroth Hive and how it's set up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for dropping by. Your backyard beekeeper here from honeybeemade.tv, hanging out inside Studio Honey Bee until the weather permits us to film outdoors. Currently, it's 40 degrees, overcast, damp, and misty here in our backyard. And our honey bees aren't doing too much at all, just keeping warm inside their cluster. We've had a couple of, couple of 65 to 70 degree days here in the past week or so, in which the girls were pretty busy bringing in pollen, probably from some skunk cabbage and snowdrop and Siberian squill. Thanks for dropping by. If you are new to us, please take a moment to support your backyard beekeeper and give that subscribe button down below a big old sting, click, slam, or whatever it takes to give us a subscribe. Welcome to Mellifera Monday, and we are beginning a new mini-series of videos for the beginning beekeeper, all of which is based on my experience as a newer beekeeper. And today, we begin this series with a look at the setup of the Langstroth Hive. The Langstroth Hive is the most popular hive, at least here in the United States, and is the type of hive I would recommend to any beekeeper just starting out. The advantage of using this type of hive is that the bees build honeycomb into or onto frames which can be removed, inspected, and moved around with quite a bit of ease. Before we begin, there is one piece of terminology I would like to familiarize you with, and that term is a super. This term will be a part of your everyday vocabulary as a beekeeper. A super is the box in which the bees store their surplus honey, the honey which we beekeepers will harvest. There are two different frame sizes that we are going to refer to. It's either going to be an eight frame super or a 10 frame super. I currently use 10 frame supers and will use these as examples in any of my future videos, unless I otherwise specify. There are three different height sizes of supers that are available. So when I get further along and refer to terms such as deep, medium, or shallow, you will have a better reference. For example, a shallow 10 frame super box, the height on that is five and three quarter inch. The height of a medium is six and five eighths inch. And of course, the deep is nine and nine sixteenths inch in height. The reason a beekeeper might use a different size of super is because of the weight of a super when it's full of honey. For example, a 10 frame shallow full of honey can weigh 35 to 40 pounds. A 10 frame medium full of honey can weigh 50 to 55 pounds. And a 10 frame deep full of honey can weigh 80 pounds or more. We're talking back breaking labor at times. So let's take a look at the Langstroth setup. First, you're going to need a base something to set your colony on, your hive on. The base can be really made of anything that is weather resistant and keeps the hive up off the ground, but not too high off the ground. Remember, if it's too high off the ground, you're still gonna need to lift those supers off the top of the hive and they weigh a lot. And you, when you have a bunch of bees buzzing around you, you don't need that added stress. Hive stands allow for good circulation and minimizing dampness within the colony. They can be purchased or you can make your own. Me, I just go with the cinder blocks just to save a little cash, and they really don't look that bad at all. Once you have your base, next is going to be the bottom board, and here you're going to have two choices. You're either going to go with a solid board or a screen board. 
Hands down through experience, I choose the screen bottom board over the solid board. Screen bottom board allows for drier conditions in the hive and can also be used for varroa mite monitoring and even some degree of varroa mite control. So now we have the base, we have the bottom board, and now you should be thinking about whether or not you need a slatted rack. This is optional for the beginning beekeeper, but I would recommend it. It gives the bees extra space within the hive. Once you have your slatted rack in place, you're gonna be wanting to think about a brood box. This is the area in which the queen will reside and where all the brood will be confined to. I use one deep for this area. Other beekeepers might use two deeps, or a combination of a medium and a deep. For me, it's one single deep, and it has been working very, very, very well for me. Now on to the queen excluder. This little piece of equipment keeps the queen from going up into your supers, into your honey supers, and laying eggs. There are a few choices for this here, but I do like to go with the metal queen excluder. It's cost-friendly and efficient. Once you have your queen excluder, on your hive, you're going to be putting on your honey supers. The number of honey supers you have on your hive will be determined by the amount of honey flow that's happening at the time in your colony. And the factors are, of course, going to include the health of your colony and the season, time of year, and the amount of nectar and pollen flow. After you have your honey supers on there, you're going to need an inner cover. Shown here is a nice cover for the summertime. The hole in the center and the front notch provide for a much needed circulation of air throughout the hive. Also, the hole and notch allow for another entrance for the honeybees to use. If you use this type of inner cover, you may want to consider using an extender in the winter so that the bees can have additional room for their winter cluster. Now on to the outer cover, as seen here with a galvanized cover. They're pretty standardized. You can get them at any of your uh, local bee stores. The only thing I would recommend after you get your outer cover on there is put some weight on it. Maybe a cinder block or a couple of red bricks. That way a good gust of wind can't take off that lid. And that's the Langstroth Hive setup. If you're interested in a honeybee hive or have a question, please give me a shout out. Our email address is in the description down below. Like us, leave a comment, subscribe, and please share the latest buzz with the world with another B-rated video from Studio Honey Bee. I'm your backyard beekeeper, and we're going to make a beeline for some honey, and we'll catch you on the B-side.